Hi, my name is Manuel Jesus Gomez and today I'm going to present our paper Visualizing Educational Game Data, a case study of visualizations to support teachers. First we're going to start with a short introduction. Uh, incorporating games in regular curriculum in schools remains limited. One of the problems for this adoption in classrooms is that teachers often don't have a clear sense for how students are interactive with the game and if the gameplay is being productive or not. Specifically, uh, in this research, we focus on obtaining those evidences of learning using sequence mining. Now we're going to see a shadow spec uh, overview. Shadow spec is a geometry and math uh, educational game. Uh, it was designed explicitly as a formative assessment tool and it measures uh, math content standards, like for example, uh, visualizing relationships uh, between 2D and 3D objects. Now we're going to see a short video about shadow spec. Uh, we see uh, that we have uh, three types uh, of levels, basic levels, intermediate levels and advanced levels. And then we have uh, a sandbox mode uh, where students can create uh, shapes uh, freely. Now we're going to try to solve uh, one of the puzzles uh, called uh, square cross sections. As we see, uh, we have uh, on the top of the scenario a set of silhouettes that we have to obtain from the uh, primitive shapes that we have uh, on the bottom of the scenario. Uh, we can put uh, that primitive uh, shapes uh, wherever we want uh, on the scenario and we can also uh, make some actions with them uh, like for example uh, the action that we want to see now uh, which consists on uh, rotating the shape, we can also scale the shape, uh, we can change the perspective on the scenario, we can paint uh, the shapes to make them more visual, uh, we, uh, we can also uh, take snapshots to see if the silhouette uh, matches with the objective one, and finally we can submit uh, the puzzle to see if the solution is correct or not. Now we are going to see uh, our sequence mining metrics proposal. We have two different metrics. Uh, the first one sequences within puzzles, which aims to reconstruct low-level actions performed by each student in each puzzle attempt. And then common errors, which aims to identify the common errors in the solving process of the different puzzles. And now we're going to see a use case of how a teacher could use the metrics and uh, visualizations developed in a classroom. The first thing uh, we see is that we have developed uh, some icons uh, that matches that match with the with the action that that students can make in the game, like for example, creating uh, the different shapes, uh, manipulating them, uh, submitting the puzzle, etc. And here we have uh, two specific, two concrete uh, sequences uh, of actions. The first one where the student solves the puzzle in very few events and then the second one with a higher number uh, of events. We focus uh, on, the, on the second sequence uh, in the last line. We have that the, student, uh, that the student after deleting the sphere and creating the cylinder, uh, it, uh, he submits the puzzle. And, uh, and complete it. And then we have the common errors visualization, which uh, uh, has the, the shapes component the master solution, and then uh, the most common errors. Uh, in this concrete case, uh, we see that the 21% of the errors uh, are related with the creation of cylinders, and then the 15% of the errors uh, are related with the deletion of spheres, uh, which matches uh, perfectly uh, with the sequence of the, of, the of the student that we have seen before. And then the uh, finally the 21% uh, of the errors are related with the uh, rotation of cylinders. So that's all uh, for today and thanks for your attention.